the NEMA 15 amp inlet. This is the best method to install the inlet without taking the wall down inside your cargo trailer. Use a two inch hole saw, a drill motor and or portable drill. Cut through the plywood first, remove the plug from the hole saw, cut through the one inch of insulation if it's so installed and pierce the outer skin with the pilot bit of your hole saw. Use painters or artist tape and tape off around your pilot hole on the outside of the cargo trailer. This will help in preventing scratches on the paint. Place your pilot bit inside the hole and begin drilling in a counterclockwise direction. Once you have a small groove around that pilot hole, you can change directions, go in a forward motion, and continue cutting that outer skin. And then you want to put some WD-40 on that. Put a little WD-40 or penetrating oil on your work area that will help keep your teeth on your hole saw nice and sharp. This hole saw cutting method works great on campers, RVs, toy haulers, and cargo trailers. Remove the gasket from the NEMA 15 amp inlet. Place it atop of the hole opening and mark the screw holes. Use a 3 16 inch drill bit and drill through the plywood. Do not attempt to drill through the outer skin from the inside. Your screws when installed will not line up properly. On the outside outer skin, I'm using the inlet housing, placing it inside of the hole and marking the screw holes to be drilled. Again, using a 3 16 inch drill bit, drill through the outer skin of the now marked work area. Now using a Dremel tool or an X-Acto knife, cut away any insulation that might interfere with installing the one inch plastic inserts. Use number eight stainless steel machine screws and washer. Place the machine screw through the plywood, then the insert and on through the outer skin. The inserts act as a backing plate, so there's no plywood that is needed directly behind the outer skin. Remember, this is the only way that you can install the inlet without taking off the plywood paneling from inside of the cargo trailer. In this video, I'm hooking up directly to a power strip. To do so, we must first Remove the three prong power plug from the end of the cable. Bend and pinch the sheathing insulation and gently rock a box cutter across the bend of the sheathing. When the sheathing begins to split, rebend the sheathing to an uncut area and repeat the process until you've gone all the way around the sheathing. Pull off the cut sheathing. You've now exposed the wires so that you can strip and tin them. There are a variety of wire strippers out there. I'm using about a medium grade wire stripper. Now strip about a quarter to a half inch of insulation from each of the wires. The type of conductors you're looking at are 14 gauge copper stranded wire. If you're not into soldering, just twist the stranded ends and continue on to the wire hookup of the power inlet shown later in this video. Tinning the stranded wire with solder will enable easy hookup to the power inlet. Brush on a rosin flux on each of the wires. This helps to conduct heat transfer 
for your solder. Place a small amount of solder on your solder tip. Touch the solder tip to the copper wire and the rosin will begin to boil immediately. Touch the solder directly to the point where the solder tip meets the copper wire. The heat transfer is complete and the solder will flow to all exposed copper areas of the wire. Use isopropyl alcohol to clean the tinned wires. The tinned copper wire should now be very shiny, a silver color. So, whether you've tinned your copper wires or you've just twisted the strands, we're now ready to hook up the cable to the power inlet. Move the cable through the hole opening. Send the power inlet housing cover over the cable and on into the cargo trailer. I've made these tinned wires a bit long here on the exposed area, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess so that it will fit properly into the power inlet. The back side of the power inlet is color coded so it's very easy to hook up the cable to the power inlet. The black wire is your 110 volt AC. The white wire is your return wire or neutral. And the green wire is ground. Tighten down each one of the wire connector screws. Be careful not to over tighten each of the connections. It is a plastic housing and will crack if you over tighten this area. Once the connections are tight, it should look very similar to what I've shown you here in this video. Step 3. Secure the power inlet. Pull the gasket from the back side of the power inlet. Push the gasket over each of the machine screws. And then do the same for the power inlet. Install your machine screw hardware, a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut on each of the machine screws. It would be nice to have a helper for this portion of the install on the power inlet. My helper is the vice grips. Cinch each of the machine screws down, moving your helper to each one of the nuts as you tighten from the back side of the power inlet. Installation of the 15 amp NEMA power inlet is now complete. Thank you for watching, and remember, it's easy once you know how.